Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us at Interiors by Jacqueline Artist Spotlight Series. Today we're with Kat Cole. She is a metal smith. She is a jewelry creator, fine art jewelry designer, and a sculpture artist. And today she's showing us some of her jewelry creations um, and just kind of taking us around her studio, her home, and has really welcomed us today. So thank you so much for this, Kat. It's my pleasure. So I was going to start off asking you about your inspiration behind all of your works um, and how you look towards geography and the built environment. Um, can you just explain more about how that came to be in your, your process? Yeah, so uh, uh, I did my undergraduate work in uh, Richmond, Virginia, and from there I actually moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania um, right after undergrad. And I, um, I was living in a new city. It was my first time being sort of disconnected from family or school, and I also was setting up my first studio. And I kind of gave myself a project of looking at the city and the architecture and the color palette of Pittsburgh as a way to sort of create a connection for myself to this place. And actually in doing that, I kind of gave myself a template for my creative practice that continues to be sort of what I work with today. So I've lived in eight different states over my adult life and every time I move, uh, my work changes and what I look at around me changes. And so I like um, architectural um, buildings, I like a lot of industrial architecture, I also look at a lot of cartography and maps when I'm uh, thinking oh, about what to make. These cutouts really remind yeah, me of cartography. Yeah, and, and living in the big city, and um, when we first moved to Dallas, we moved right into down, uptown, and we were looking right out onto downtown, and this sense of all of these windows and this space and this density of people um, sort of created a, a line of work where there's a lot of windows and a lot of this sort of layering of um, architectural elements. And, and Pittsburgh is very industrial. Yes, very much so. It's got um, uh, a lot of the old uh, steel mills and, and just this beautiful architecture and bridges and things. So it was sort of a wonderful creative start for me. Um, as a professional artist. Fantastic, really stunning work. The phrase I use is my head, it made my head explode. That's how <laughs> exciting and unique this was for me. Um, speaking of travel, I know you just came from Germany. Yes. Um, Munich Jewelry Week, is that correct? Yes. So how was that? That sounds awesome. It was amazing. It's my second time uh, going to Munich uh, and it's a sort of, it feels a little bit like a pil pilgrimage for uh, someone who is in the contemporary jewelry field. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to meet a bunch of other like-minded makers from all over the world. Everywhere from New Zealand to Argentina to Australia um, uh, are there for that one week doing exhibitions, showing their work and it's a way to sort of see what the world is doing in contemporary jewelry, which is very exciting things. I'm just curious, even though I believe I know the answer, but how was your work received there? It was received very well. I've had um, a lot of um, accolades or success, I guess, um, in recognition nationally and in beginning to be internationally, so I'm really delighted to be able to be a part of the conversation that's happening, um, not just in the United States, about what is adornment or what is, what does it mean to wear something um, or that's more than just a little pair of earrings or a, a t tiny pendant, what does it mean to really uh, make a statement with um, what you wear. And these are definitely statement pieces. Yes. For sure. Um, two things I want to talk about. We're going to you explaining individual pieces, but I want to talk about the teaching aspect because sure. I'm really passionate about helping people getting into a career in youngsters, whether that's high school, elementary, or through college, pursuing creative careers. Yeah. Um, that's not something that I was super encouraged to do growing up. Um, I did go to law school actually, and now I have a creative career path, as you know. Um, but I really am excited when I hear that people are teaching uh, their creative trade and how um, the students you've been working with in the university system, how exciting has that been, inspiring young designers, young artists? It's, um, it's a really special thing to be able to teach in a university setting in particular because you do um, get to connect with people who are at um, a really uh, special age, uh, especially in the creative field because they're just 
finding their voice. Um, it's um, oftentimes very tentative steps, uh, thinking about, well, how do I make money? What is this thing? Do I like it? Would I keep doing it if I wasn't in school and had a deadline and somebody's telling me I should be doing it? So it's um, a wonderful time to be an educator um, in someone's life. And I've taught, I taught in graduate school as well as when I was in Michigan. And um, it's one of the more special experiences that I've had the pleasure of having. Um, and I'm in contact with a lot of those students still, which is like amazing. Uh, but on a more day-to-day -day, um, uh, schedule, I teach workshops mostly for adults. Uh, a lot of times they're uh, women who are um, just retiring or who are looking for um, who are looking for a life passion, something beyond maybe the day-to-day -day grind, and they look for um, uh, ways to be creative, and, and so they're taking workshops, and they're learning hand skills, and they're figuring out ways um, to communicate through the things that they're making, and that's also really exciting, but in a really different way. Yes, and um, going back to being a student, thinking back when you were in school, Yeah. So you studied um, jewelry design at both the undergraduate and master's level. That's right. So going back to before you were in college, you're in high school, mm -hmm. did you know that you were going to set out to do this? Not be a model smith. I had no idea what that was. I, don't, I think most people um, may not really know what a metal smith is or how jewelry is made. Um, but I did know in high school that I was going to pursue a creative uh, life for myself. My, my parents were very supportive uh, and my mom got me involved in painting when I was nine and I think it instilled something in there that um, just never quite uh, let go of me. And I feel very lucky to be able to pursue a professional full-time career as a studio artist. It's uh, not uh, an easy thing to set about doing. There is no particular guidelines as to how to end up here. It's sort of you just take one opportunity and one day at a time and 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 keep making. I think that I had um, someone, I don't even remember who it was, when I was just touring the undergraduate facility at Virginia Commonwealth University say, you know, really the only point is just to keep making. If you just keep making, the right things will happen over time. And I have found that to be true for myself. And I've always, even if I don't have access to a metalsmithing studio or all the equipment that I have, I keep my hands busy. I keep my mind um, engaged. And that seems to have um, led to good things. And you showed us a ton of equipment already, so you technically could use even more than that, sounds like. Oh, I think, I think I'm always looking for the next great piece of equipment or the next, like, perfect hammer. I think um, it's sort of an insatiable thing to a certain extent. Maybe it's the same way as, like, the next great plant that I, that I get. Yes, that's a hunt that I'm always on, the next yeah. uh, greatest plant. So I, I totally love your whole approach. Um, let's get into some of your specific pieces here. Um, so this is uh, the most recent piece off the bench. Um, just literally two days ago, and this is a similar style as to what um, uh, I was showing in my studio um, in terms of a pile of different structures being all put together. And thinking about like pieces like this, I have to, so all of this work goes in as a whole piece into the kiln at 1500 degrees. And so figuring out how to put it all together in a way that it doesn't fall apart when it's in the kiln is sort of the trick. And um, so these are some, that's maybe some of my more complex um, wow. pieces. Wow, really like this. And it, actually, and it looks beautiful on. I think that was one of, um, I always like to test drive the new oh, ones. do, yes. Because, I mean, how do, you, how do you know if it is going to sit right or if it's going to wear nice or if there's going to be something that rubs funny? Unless you try it on and you wear it around I a little bit. I love that. And sometimes it's me in my pajamas wearing my necklaces <laughs> to make sure that everything does what it's supposed to do because at the end of the day, I'm making sculpture for the body and I have to think about how does it really fit on the body? Does it really 
feel comfortable? Does it make a statement? Does it feel powerful and exciting? And it does. Uh, you know, <laughs> sexy. You know, what what is it? What does it do on the body? And I've mentioned these are heirloom quality pieces. I mean, if someone is able to purchase one of your pieces, I mean, they should hold on to it forever and ever and enjoy them because the metal is excellent quality. The enamel on top, you've explained, doesn't fade. Again, they're the really thin steel, so that it's very comfortable. They're super lightweight. And then hinging them on the bottom means that they kind of have some movement and some sway so that they, you know, create a little bit more of a, a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're talking about pieces like this really large one, the whole back is hinged. Um, and I think that's one of the signature qualities of my large necklaces is that they all have Wow. This intricate hinging system on the Gives back. Some movement. Right, so it sort of flows across the, uh, what I call the like landscape of the body, mm -hmm. and 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 it moves with you, and it and it doesn't feel stiff or it doesn't um, sit awkwardly. And for the viewers out there watching, Cat's work will be um, on December first and second that weekend the Dallas um, Nasher Sculpture Center. So. This is a perfect match. I could see your work amongst the sculptures and all of that. Oh, it's um, such an amazing space. And I will be there, so hopefully you guys will join us also. Wow, this has been so awesome today. Thank you for having us over, Kat. Really excited about everything that you're working on, and I will be keeping my eye on your work in the future. Readers, you can find Kat's website at the bottom of this blog post. Thanks for watching. Interiors by Jacqueline. Bye, everyone. Thank you.